try to walk through this world Trying to make it on our own We stumble and we fall We were walking alone But Jesus is waiting there Just to hear us call his name So he can walk us through this world And we can give him the praise Stand alone. We've got to learn to hold his hand, pray and be bold. We've got to learn to walk in faith each and every day. We got to stand with the great I have. armor of God to protect us from the world. We got the gifts of the Holy Spirit to keep the devil away. We've got peace, love, and joy, and we can sing it in praise. We've got to stand on his word so we don't have to stand alone. And a very good day to you and welcome to the Oak Plantation. This is a neighbor's farm. It's one of the last oak plantations in South Africa. It was planted by the early German settlers and they used to keep their pigs underneath these oak trees and feed them up on the acorns. What a beautiful setting. I feel like I'm in Sherwood Forest in England, I'm expecting Robin Hood <laughs> and his merry men to come through here any moment. But I want to tell you who is here today. Yes, the Holy Spirit is here, Jesus is here, and our Heavenly Father is here. I want to encourage you, my dear friend, to relax today. Take a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, sit down quietly with your family and listen to the Word of God. We've called this program Call. And there's one scripture in the Bible. It's one of my favorite scriptures, actually. It's found in the Old Testament in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33 and verse 3. And this is what it says. Call to me. It's what God's saying. And I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call unto me. Make a phone call to Jesus. That's right. Jesus' telephone number, Jeremiah 333. Remember that. Call unto me. And what does he say? And I will answer you. You know the wonderful thing I love about the Lord? You can call that number 
any time of day, any time of night. It doesn't matter whether you are in an aeroplane, whether you are in a ship, whether you are sitting in an oak plantation. He is never too busy. You will never get an answering machine saying, sorry, I can't take your call now, but leave a message and I'll return the call later. He never says that. As soon as you call, he says, I'm here. What can I do for you, Angus? And I'm saying, Lord, I'm feeling a little bit down today. Well, have a, let's have a nice chat. But we don't do it, do we? We need to phone that number. Jeremiah 333. Three, three. Call unto me and I will answer you. It's beautiful. And you know, since I've known the Lord, which is now over 43 years, there's not one phone call that I've made to Jesus that has come back, sorry, engaged, or the line is busy. I don't think there's a busier person in the universe than Jesus Christ when it comes to answering calls. And yet he answers every single call that you and I make. But I want to say something to you. How can you call on someone that you do not know? You see, that's where the problem comes. You say, oh, but I, 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 I pray to Jesus, I call on him, but I don't get any answer. Well, do you believe that he's hearing your request? Well, no, not really. Exactly. If you don't know him, how can you phone him? I mean, young person, listen to me. Can you imagine phoning somebody and the person picks up the cell phone and says, yes, can I help you? And you say, yes, please. I need to speak to someone. And the, and the person on the other side says, who do you want to speak to? And you say, I don't know. Well, how can he help you? He can't help you. You need to know the name of the person that you are calling. Right? So I know his name. How? Because I gave my heart to him 43 years ago on the 18th of February, 1900. And 79, I said, I can't anymore, Lord, I need you. He says, I'm here. I started calling that number 43 years ago. When I make that call, he's waiting for me. And it's beautiful. I really mean that. doesn't matter what's happening in my happiest times, in my most fearful times. I had the privilege of getting on the stage, not once, and speaking to over a million people live. Folks, I want to tell you, I'm just a farm boy. I'm not a professional speaker. I'm not a narrator. I've never had any training in my life. And when you get on that platform, you need to know the number. <laughs> Jeremiah 333. Because I got onto that stage and I looked out and as far as my eye could see, over two kilometers of people. And the Lord says, I'm here, Angus. I'm saying, Lord, I need help. He says, don't worry. He says, just stand. He says, and I will do the work. Stand, the battle is mine. There's a word for somebody watching this program. The Lord says, you don't have to keep fighting. Just stand. Phone the Lord and tell him your prayer request. Tell him that you're having problems with your marriage. Tell him. Tell him that you are desperate to have a child and you just cannot fall pregnant. Tell him. Tell him about that rebellious son who's gone into the far country. And you're worried if he'll ever come back again. Tell him. That's what the phone is for. Phone him and tell him. And I want to tell you, folks, it works for me. Every time I sit down, like I'm sitting on this log here, this old oak tree that's fallen down, and I have a nice chat, a nice talk with the Lord, I always feel better afterwards. You know what they say? A burden shared is a burden halved. You say, Angus, you've got no idea how lonely I am. My husband died. He got COVID-19 and he died. My, my wife died and I'm on my own. Phone him. That's what the phone's there for. Call him. Yeah, but I'm not used to this because I'm not hearing anything coming back. That's where faith comes in. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. See? That's what Augustine said. He said, faith is to believe what you cannot see. But the reward of that faith is to see what you believed. And I'm telling you, 
when you start getting used to phoning the Lord every morning, every morning, what is your time? My time, four o'clock. That's it. I open my eyes at four o'clock. Yes, I use an alarm clock because I don't want to be late. Many times I don't have to, I can switch the alarm clock off at five to four. And then I turn over and I tell my wife I love her and then we pray together. What do we do? We call the number. Lord, I bring our family before you today. I bring our children before you today. Lord, I've got some programs today. I pray that you'll be with the film crew because they have to drive all the way from Durban. That's two hours drive to Bia. Keep them safe, Lord, because the roads are quite dangerous these days. That's what the phone call is about. But I want to say to you, we need to call upon the Lord. You cannot just wing it on your own. It doesn't work like that because it, uh, eventually you just won't be able to do it. So you've got to know his name. And then what else? How can we call on someone in whom we don't believe and we don't trust? How can you do that? You can't. You cannot phone somebody and you want to phone up a mechanic to fix your car, but you don't believe that he can do it. Why are you phoning him? Because you, straight away, before he even starts, he's got no chance. Why are you phoning that doctor, but you don't have any faith in that doctor? Why are you doing it? I want to tell you, you need to trust God. You need to trust Jesus. You need to trust the Holy Spirit. And then the phone call becomes worthwhile. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. It's no good saying, well, I'm trusting the Lord, but you don't believe. See? So we really need to put our trust in the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to believe God. And he that believes must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently, right? Diligently phone him. Diligently seek him. Okay? The Lord says he will reward you. I want to tell you, I don't know how many times, being a farmer, I've been confused. Lord, do I plant maize or do I plant beans, for example? Now, this, this uh, agricultural representative will tell me, no, you must plant beans. The price of beans is going to be good this year. And then the, uh, uh, another rep comes, he wants to sell me maize seed. He says, no, you must plant maize because it's going to be a great season for maize. What do you do? You make a phone call. That's right. Lord, I don't know what to do here. And you go to the Word, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you every time you'll make the right decision. And you'll say to the one guy, listen, I can't do it this time. Why? Well, depends who you're talking to. You can say, I've made a phone call. <laughs> and I've been advised from higher authorities. No. <laughs> and then you do it. You know, some people say, oh, you lucky, Angus. Angus, you're lucky. You've got a hotline to heaven. You know how many times guys have said that to me? Not Christians, eh? Angus has got a hotline to heaven. And what do I say? Yes, I have, actually. I'll never forget, we were going through a very bad drought in this area some years back. And I was driving into town in my pickup. And we came to the, the, the robots, the traffic lights, and they were red. And another pickup came alongside me, and the guy turned the window down. Another fellow farmer... He said, hey, Angus, he says, getting a bit dry. I said, yeah, I can see that. He says, I think you need to make a phone call to the man upstairs. See? Now, he wasn't being disrespectful. He didn't know how to, to speak to the Lord. And I could have said to him, well, why don't you phone him yourself? But I didn't do that. I said, no, no, we've got it under control. We phone him. In fact, we're having a prayer meeting in the town hall on Thursday. Come along. Well, I don't know if I can make it. I said, you want rain, don't you? Yes, I said, I'll see you there. And he came, and many others. And every time we walked out that town hall, and this has happened for many years, it's raining. And then people say, oh, it was just a coincidence. No, it was a phone call we made to the rainmaker. <laughs> and he heard the call, and he sent the rain. And then tell me, Angus, what happens if it doesn't rain? Well, the Lord knows. The rain will come when he wants it to come. We cannot, and this is a very serious word I'm going to bring to you now. We cannot switch on God like a light switch on and off. We cannot do that. We live on earth and he lives in heaven. 
I have a problem when I see speakers saying, come Holy Spirit, come now. Who do you think you're talking to? We've got to start showing some respect to God. We serve a God who made everything you see with one word. When I telephone the Lord, and I'm talking about prayer, it's with normally on my knees, it's with great respect. Lord, I need help. And many times it's with tears. Lord, please help me. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this one. I'm financially strapped and I've got, I, need, I need to pay accounts. Please help me, Lord. And he helps me. You can't start thumping the table and demanding anything. But remember, when a man in the world who, or a woman who's never met Jesus, when they talk about the man upstairs and they talk about the hotline, they, they, they're not being disrespectful. They don't know how to express themselves. Okay? But we, in return, must be gentle with them. Yes, I'm going to make a call, but why don't you also make one? Yeah, well, not today. I'll do it some other time. But please pray for us. It's, a, it's actually a backhanded compliment, isn't it, really? When somebody will come to you and say, please speak to the man upstairs. We need to know his name. What is his name? I want you to go with me to the book of Exodus chapter 3, right at the beginning of the Bible. Exodus chapter 3. And I'm going to show you about a man who found out the name, the name of God. See, see, it's no good calling to somebody that you don't know or somebody that you've heard of from somebody else. You need to know him for yourself. Now, Moses was in the desert. Remember, he was looking after Jethro's sheep. And what happened? He saw a miracle. He was walking along and all of a sudden he saw a bush that was on fire. Okay? But the bush wasn't burning up. It was a green bush, but there were flames coming out of it. And he knew that he was on holy ground. He had to take his sandals off and get on his knees. And then he came face to face with the living God. And this is verse 14. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. See, because Moses said, they won't believe it's you, Lord. What, who should I say has sent, sent me? I am. What does that mean? I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I am life. I am has sent you to tell the people. And so he could go to them and say, I am. See, I am. And I want to say to you today that you need to get to know his name. What is his name? His name is I am. I love him. I love him so much. I want to say to you, my dear friend, watching this program, that Jesus Christ is more real to me than you watching this program. I really mean it. He is so real. I could never, ever say, well, there's no answer on the other side when I make that call. You see, it's all about faith, not faith in faith. No, no, no. Faith in a person. And who is that person? His name is Jesus Christ. And he's the one that will reward you if you phone him with faith. John chapter 14, verse 5. What, what does that say? Well, it's Thomas. And Thomas is saying to the Lord, Jesus, how can we know? How can we know where you're going, Lord? You say you're going. Where, where are you going? How can we know? So you pick up that phone and you need to know who you are phoning. So Jesus answers him in verse 6 of John chapter 14. He says, I am. Isn't that a coincidence? No. I am the way and the truth and the life and no one's going to the Father but by me. Jesus said that. I am. See, he says, if you've seen me, you've seen my father, because the two of us are one. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. Don't let anybody ever tell you that there is no Holy Trinity. Don't let anybody tell you that there's only one God and there's no Jesus and there's no Holy Spirit. That person is not to be trusted. I'm telling you that there is a heavenly father there is one son, his name is Jesus, and there is the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our paracletos, our helper. Now, how do we make this phone call? I'll tell you how we do it. 
we phone Jesus, okay, right? And Jesus speaks to his Father, okay, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's how we pray. We pray to God through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, correct? That's how you do it. No other way. You pray to Jesus, and he speaks to his Father, and the Holy Spirit gives us the anointing. That's how you do it. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Get the right phone number. Some of you have been phoning the wrong number. That's why you're not getting the Lord. <laughs> Even the cameramen are laughing. But it's a fact. Some of your phone numbers are spelt M-O-N-E-Y. You won't get any answer. Other numbers are F-A-M-O-U-S. Famous. You won't get any answer. The other one is H-E-A-L-T-H. Now, I've got no problem with health. I'm a cyclist. I ride my horse. I do press-ups, but it's not my life. I'm not depending on my health. Some people speak, I'm talking about Christians. They speak more about getting fit and eating correctly than they do about eternal life. They're on the wrong line. Get back to the right phone number. Jeremiah 333. Call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things of which you do not know. I have no problem with marriage counselors. I do a lot of that myself. But there's only one who has the right answer. Phone him. Lord, my marriage is in a mess. Help me. He says, I'll help you. And 90% 90, 90 of the time, it's your own fault, by the way. That's right. You've got to humble yourself. And then your marriage comes into line. You've got to give over. You've got to listen to your wife. You've got to listen to your husband. And you, most of all, you've got to love them. And Jesus will tell you that when you phone him. Now remember, faith has got feet. It's a doing word. James 2.18, he says, I'll show you my faith by my works. So we need to pray and pray the prayer of faith. He's trustworthy, folks. Jeremiah 29, 11. He wants us to prosper and he doesn't want us to be harmed by anyone. So please, let's start phoning him more often. We need childlike faith. Okay? You know, I love to hear my little grandchildren praying. It makes me cry. They just straight to the point. No messing around. <laughs> I just love it. Lord, I'm scared. And he says, it's okay, I've got your hand. Thank you, Lord. And out he goes and he plays. He's fine. Lord, I'm just uh, praying that you look after my dad. I don't know why he's a bit late today. No problem. Then out he goes and plays with these little dinkies in the sand. Why? Because he's got childlike faith. Stop always trying to justify things. People write to me and they say, why is this happening? Why is that? You know what I tell them? I don't know. But when I get to heaven, I'll find out and then I'll tell you. <laughs> because I'm not God. I'm just a person like you. But I do know how to use that phone. And I tell you what, he answers me and he often doesn't give me the answer I want, but he gives me the right answer. Sometimes I say, no, nah, Lord. And he says, yes, that's how you're going to do it. Forgive, love, and continue. So I want to pray for you. And I want to pray that the Lord will help you to make regular phone calls to God. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter how big it is, whether you're praying about the, um, the situation in the world with a potential world war, or whether you're praying about getting food for lunch today. Same thing. Pray. So let's pray together. And I'm going to pray slowly because many people say, I pray too fast and you can't keep up with me. So I'm going to pray slowly. And maybe this will be your first phone call that you are going to make with me to Jesus. And he will tell his father and the Holy Spirit will give us the anointing. Okay, shall we pray? Please, maybe you could close your eyes and uh, maybe the children could settle down and you could pray together. Okay, shall we pray? Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us a phone number. Jeremiah 
333. Now, Lord, we want you to please help us to learn to speak to you every single day. And not just early in the morning when we have our quiet time, but right through the day. If it's something as trivial as looking for a parking place, Lord, then help us to do it or to find out what it is that we need to bring home from the grocery store. Or if it's something like looking after my little boy at school today. But Lord, please teach us to talk with you more. Because after we've had a good talk with you, we always feel so much better, like I am feeling right now. Lord, we love you. You have promised us in your word that you will never leave us and that you will never forsake us. And Lord, we know that's to be found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 5. So we thank you for being a friend to us who's always on the other side of the line waiting to take our call. Lord, we know that you want us to phone you more than we want to phone you. So we thank you for that privilege. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you until the next time. Goodbye. We try to walk through this world Trying to make it on our own We stumble and we fall We were walking alone But Jesus is waiting there Just to hear us call His name so he can walk us through this world And we can give him the praise We've got to stand on his word So we don't have to stand alone We've got to learn to hold his hand Pray and be bold We've got to learn to walk in faith Each and every day got to stand with the great I have. We've got everything we need when we're in God's Word. We got the armor of God to protect us from the world. We got the gifts of the Holy Spirit to keep the devil away. We've got peace, love, and joy, and we can sing it in praise. We've got to stand on His Word so we don't have to stand alone. We've got to learn. With the great I have Hey